Yes, the email. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I believe he said he was going to arrive at seven. Oh, okay. Well, I don't. I think he. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's coming. Can you? <laughs> You understand that? Okay with it? I, I think so. Yeah. Just may, you know, start the meeting. Yeah. Okay. We're not first on your agenda. I think whenever there's something on the agenda, it's now the phone is talking about. What's first on your agenda? Uh, Summer Street, I believe. Do you have a package? No. Wait, there's a public hearing though. Is it an HP share? Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, I help out. Yeah, that's correspondence and so forth. You don't give them a package? No, actually, one of the things we did was that you know, yeah. we like to say that we treat the yeah. We like to say that we treat the No, not in this case. I don't think it should be. No. Well, I know. In the newspaper. Yeah. 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 So any correspondence you'll just bring up on the screen. I can. Right. All I know is all I know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's no other for the Larry. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, Larry? Yeah, I was able to take Summer Street. Uh, yeah. Not Larry? Oh, Rebecca's here. Sorry. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. The notice for at least on the town website was for the hearing to start at six thirty. The regular public hearing. Yeah. Okay. No, the joint meeting was published at six thirty. No. I assume the hearing was advertised right in the paper. Okay. Oh, the planning board would. Can we dispense for this? Wait, it, it, it's been advertised at 6 30. We're advertised for 6 30, so you'll have to open both the paperwork. Okay. It might be a good idea to find out why these people are here. If they're here for the 7 o'clock, maybe we should do that first. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. yeah, I'll go. Yeah, All right, uh, being 6 30 on uh, Wednesday, August 18th, 2021, we're going to open this meeting of the Bridgewater Planning Board. Uh, also joining us tonight are the CEDC. Uh, we had a little scheduling uh, conflict, so I wanted to check who is here for the uh, seven o'clock joint meeting. And who is, is anybody here for 166 Summer Street? Okay. okay. I think we'll I think we'll take Summer Street first in that case. That's fine. All right, so I guess we'll begin by opening the uh, public meeting for 166 Summer Street, a site plan. 161. 161 Summer Street, a site plan review. And the proponent. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we also have to uh, open the uh, the CDC public hearing as well. Uh, but I'm going to make a motion to uh, table okay. that till seven o'clock. I'll make the motion. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll make the motion that the joint public hearing, the CEDC, be postponed to, to, to uh, seven o'clock. A second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, aye. All right. Well, Does he have to open up? That's probably part of the CEDC. Does he have to open up? Does he have to open up? Oh. You guys should. Open I don't up. know what protocol is here. I don't know. Oh, that makes sense. So you have to open up. Don't you have to open okay, up so I'll open up the public hearing of the 
Community and Economic Development Committee, joint, a joint hearing with the Planning Board at 6.30 regarding 90, uh, 96 Main Street. So I'll make a motion we recess till seven o'clock when these guests are ready. A second. Our discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, and you may begin on 161 Summer Street. Rebecca from Silver Engineering. We're here for the 161 Summer Street site plan for Bridgewater Foundation. They're, they're looking to um, renovate and reuse the building for a community and educational service. Um, so as soon as I get the plan on the screen, that'd be awesome. So no, you bet, you bet. So they're adding on uh, an addition. Um, you got to speak into the mic, Rebecca. Okay, how about if I do this? That's perfect, thank okay. you. Okay, so we have a, a change for the lawn that's on the side there into a parking lot to accommodate 35 parking spaces. We have underground drainage to accommodate the new impervious surface. The roofs will be recharged so that there is no impact there. We have landscaping all around the whole. We have a lovely landscaping plan. I hope it's in your packet. Um, I know there was a few comments that I hope I can resolve from the town engineer. Pretty straightforward. I know one of them was in regard to will it stay two parcels or will it remain one parcel? And so after site plan is granted, we will be returning this to a one parcel and rescinding or recombining the two lots into one. So there will be no two lots, it will only be the one lot. So that hopefully addresses that concern. Um, there was a concern that I didn't um, memorialize the use for the parking. I did uh, before I came here in a table, if you'd like, um, for an office for the use as proposed now and for the future use. An office would require 28 spaces. And again, we have 35 shown. You can, I don't have enough for everybody, I'm sorry. Um, another concern that was uh, brought to my attention was a stray detail for an overflow drainage, which doesn't belong. It, it, it was a carryover from a previous site plan. There is no need for that drainage overflow. It can be removed in the final condition of approval plan set. Um, I'm sure you have all kinds of questions. Mr. Jamian's good for questions. I always like your questions. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, do you have any further comments, Mr. Antonio? No, I didn't give you the table. Uh, no, no, sure. uh, sorry, Zoo, you have to go to the mic, please. So I, I don't uh, uh, recall what she, if I heard her correctly, uh, how they are treating the uh, yeah. two parcels because there was that that property was subdivided back in 2018 um, into two parcels, one containing the existing uh, dwelling, and then the other one a vacant lot, and so the assessors has actually memorialized those two as two separate parcels. But on this site plan application, it utilizes both parcels, but only gives reference to one parcel identification. So they need to clarify exactly uh, whether they are recombining the two parcels, because if they are not recombining the two parcels and they intend to keep them separated, then the issue then is, if the second parcel is encumbered by the parking and the drainage system, then down the road, if they wanna do something with that parcel, they sort of have limited themselves and created a hardship where they will turn around and ask for waivers that will not be needed. I've confirmed with Bridgewater Foundation, they plan to recombine the lots. Uh, Mr. Antonello, do, do you believe that would need to be affirmatively done before we could proceed on this, or is the applicant being aware of the issue and planning to combine them sufficient enough, in your opinion? 
Well, I do think that you need a plan that recombines them as a, a single lot, because that's what your decision has to be based on. It's based, if you're basing the decision on the app, what is shown on the application, they did not include uh, lot 279, which is that parcel in the application. Then you will be unwittingly giving them a permit to build a lot that they did not include in the application. Okay, so you're in your opinion, they would have to submit an A&I and recombine those, those parcels before proceeding. That would be correct. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from the board? Are there, just Mr. Chairman, are there comments from the Community Economic Department? Besides Mr. Antonero's? Are there any comments from your department or are there other, just Mr. Antonero's comments? Yes, so as we noted in, thank you, Isaac. Um, as we noted in the memo that the landscape plan is a preliminary landscape plan, we did recommend getting that stamped by a landscape architect as that's just, that's the norm for the board. We um, submitted a letter requesting a waiver from a landscape to plan. The campus has always done great landscaping and they plan to do the same here. Did you get the waiver request? Yes, we did. Did you receive that in your packet? My question is why, why would you want a waiver when everybody else does landscaping plans? Understood. It was a request. That's where it will stand. It's either a yes or a no. Okay, they, well. Well, they did provide you know, the rest of the site other than the fact that it's two separate parcels. The parking is adequate for that use. The lighting is on the site. Um, the lighting on the site meets our standards. It's shielded away from the other properties surrounding it. So the circulation meets the required widths. Okay, well, based on uh, town engineer's comments, then I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, move this uh, meeting to uh, two weeks from now to work out the lots. Okay, yeah, enough time, Rebecca. When's the deadline to dis to submit you and A&R? Uh, the week before September 1st. So Perfect. Do you need more time? Than no, that? as long as you can act on one before the other, we should be good to go. Okay, my motion is to uh, continue this hearing to I believe, uh, August 28th, is it? September 1st is the hearing date. September. September 1st is our next okay. hearing date. And that's, uh, we have time. Is, is that enough time for you, Rebecca? I just yeah. have to delete some lines. I mean, an A&R an doesn't have to be advertised. So if you can okay. get it in even that Friday before the 26th. I mean, de the deadline is to the week before the 25th. Yeah. That's my motion. September 1st. September 1st. Do we have a second? I'll second. Um, may I inquire as to the waiver request? Should I plan to get a denial on that waiver request so I can act accordingly? The board should probably make that decision tonight so that the applicant has time to get the landscape architect if they need to. Well, personal opinion, I, I hear no reason why there should be a waiver, so I'm not in favor of it. I agree with that. Yeah, you know, we, don't, we don't want to set precedents for everybody else. Correct. Right, I leave them on the same page with that Mr. one. Mr. Chair, may I just ask, would, uh, would you like to ask the public if they would like to ask any questions while? Uh, yeah, we'll certainly open up to public comment. Uh... Yeah, that's right. My fault. <laughs> Unless the board has any other questions first. Do we want to vote on the uh, the landscape uh, waiver first? Or? We probably should we take, a, take a look on this. Okay. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll take the public comment first. Okay. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak? Okay. All right. In that case, I'll, uh, I'll take a motion for the uh, the landscape waiver request. I'll make the motion that we deny the uh, landscape waiver request. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we have a motion to continue the hearing to September 1st. Yep. Uh, so uh, any discussion on the continuation? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Thank you. That's uh yeah. You guys want to take that a little early? See my brother. The uh, CDC discussion. Yeah. Are we doing those? Uh, those are. So whoever's speaking, you got to speak into the mic because we're recording this for the minutes, and we need you to speak into the mic. Thank you. I believe we have a few continuation requests we could do before seven o'clock, pretty quickly. I hadn't received any requests. So I, I, Rebecca's stuff is still here. So I don't know if she's here for Street and Way as well to request okay. a continuance, but I haven't heard from Scotland Boulevard. Um, I didn't get a continuance request from them. We're within our time limit. So we can request a continuance. Is that correct, Jennifer? On Scotland Boulevard, that's correct. Yes. Okay, so I guess we'll take uh, whatever's next on the agenda then. Uh, don't have one in front of me. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll take Scott Boulevard now. So yeah, proponent here. They're not here. Would you like to ask if anybody's here for that hearing? Yeah, it's uh, just this the proponent here. Any anyone here for Scotland? Anybody from the public here for Scotland Boulevard or anybody on Zoom? Okay, and we, we, we did receive a continuation request via correspondence on that one, is that we correct? We did not receive a continuation request, that's correct. Oh, I'm at a loss so on that one then. So what's, the, what's the recommendation? Recommendation is to continue the hearing to your next scheduled meeting. Okay, are uh, you? Yeah. No proponent, no public comment. So I guess we'll take a motion on continuing uh, that. I'll make, a, uh, I'll make a motion to continue Scotland Boulevard to September 1st at 6.30. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Read them, boy. Yeah. Uh, Do we have anybody here for Saritum Way subdivision? I can't oh. my continuation request. Okay. Dear board members, on behalf of our client, Silva Engineering Associates, SEA, we would like to request a continuation from the meeting scheduled for August 18th to the first meeting scheduled in September. SEA also requests an extension for 30 days to allow the board to complete their review of the revised plans that were submitted on July 28th, 2021. Okay. We have a motion to continue? I'll make the motion to continue. Do we have a second? September 1st. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 September 1st? September 1st. Thank you. All right. With that business concluded, I believe we'll uh, reopen the CDC hearing. Is that uh, seven o'clock? Oh, seven o'clock. Oh. Recess. Go to recess. Pending. If you if you had it advertised for I can't find the legal ad, but if the legal ad said six thirty, you can start it now. Just because your agenda says seven doesn't mean that the legal posting is the legal ad. So if that's what was said six thirty, you can start it now. That makes sense. You good? You guys, go with it. And Mr. Driscoll is on his way. I texted him. I have another question. We voted to go into recess. How can we take a vote to come out of recess if we're in recess? It was, it was a recess until they were ready. Correct. That's you don't need, you don't need to vote <laughs> to come out of recess. <laughs> but I, I am interested in the in the legal notice because I didn't see one. So does it say six thirty or seven? Is um, there... I haven't been able to locate it. I didn't do it. It was done by the temporary council clerk, and I'm not able to reach him at this time, so I can't find it. Because um, I think if 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 there's doubt, then we need to wait till seven p.m. I agree with that. Eleven minutes. 
let me try to reach him one more time, but I don't know if he's answering Would emails. Would you like to go into a recess for the next 11 minutes? Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyone like to make that sure. motion? I'll make a motion that we go into recess until 7 p.m. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 So do, do we have to come out of recess? Yeah, I just meant so. Do we have a motion to come out of recess? I'll make a motion to come out of recess. I'll second it. Aye. 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 Your motion for the Community Economic Development Committee to come out of recess? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there somebody here? I don't know who's in the audience, so I don't know if nobody's in the audience. Oh, okay. So I can. Um, so um, I was approached by an engineer working for the property owner of 96 Main Street they would like to um, demolish the existing residential structure and build a smaller mixed use structure with commercial on the first floor and residences on the upper floors. Um, the front part of the parcel, um, Jasmine, if you could move down to the map, the front part of the parcel is already zoned central business district, but the rear part of the parcel is zoned residential D. We don't allow parking in our residential zoning districts. So in order for them to make the parking work, they would need to rezone the entire parcel central business district to make this parcel work. Um, I met with um, Councillor Souza, who is the counselor of the district in question, reviewed this with him and he agreed with the change and agreed to sponsor the change. Um, and so that's why I went before the council, I believe back in April. Um, or maybe, maybe May, and it's now before you this evening. Um, it's, I think, pretty straightforward, but I'm happy to answer questions if anybody has any to the best of my ability. You need to, you need to speak into the mic, please. Yeah, which building is to be demolished, the brick structure or the main house? I think they're proposing to demolish, I thought there was only one. Oh, you mean the back garage? I think, yeah, they're proposing no, to, well, to- There's that brick office building that's towards the front of the lot. Is that the same lot? No, this is just a house. Okay. It's like a yellow house. It's kind of yeah. dilapidated. Okay, so Jennifer, you, you said a smaller mixed use building. So it looks a lot larger on the line. Okay. Is that my, it looks like a 5,000 square foot footprint three-story? I think it's the footprint I thought was smaller, but it might be taller. I think it's total of 5,000 square feet, but I think the footprint is smaller, no? I could be wrong. I don't know what the footprint of the house is. It looks like a big, looks like a big house to me, but. Could I interject, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Um, I'm not sure how we proceed here with no proponent here to Give us any details to argue anything. You know, well, I'm 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 uncomfortable feeling ahead on this with without somebody that wants to change explaining what and why they're doing this. I just explained to you why they're doing it. I'm not sure. I said proponent. I'd like to hear. Yeah, it seems odd that a representative from town government would be advocating for a change for a private citizen. Exactly. But why do we have it up? Could we, could we ask? I just, I just want to try to get some answers. Do you mind just somebody asking? No, I, I, sure. But um, I, we have uh, some public comment already, I believe. It should be read into the record. Can I, can I, so my question is, is on a zoning change, just refresh my mem memory, Ms. Burke, a zoning change, so, so this abuts residential properties on Union Street. I looked online as a retreat lot behind this. Um, it's about three acres. And then there's um, another house in close proximity, right, I think which used to be referred to as the Snow's Lodge. Uh, are these abutters notified that this property that they think is commercial up to a certain point and then a residential after that could be all commercial? 
I mean, we don't know. No, we don't. We don't notify specific abutters for a zoning change. It's not required under the law. We do advertise it in the paper. <laughs> but my only concern is that it's it could really change that. And I, I think I've said it to you before. Like I, I think down, downtown has many different areas. Like Broad Street could be much higher density development around the common could obviously be higher density development, but. I just get, I'm concerned that if those immediate abutters don't know that we're here discussing it or weren't paying attention to the newspaper, that that could be a drastic change in their neighborhood. Uh, well, we don't, it's not um, in our process, it's never been our practice and it's not required in the law to notify abutters of a zoning change. So I'm not sure what your intention would be or how you would anticipate us going about that. Uh, Jennifer, yes. if I may, uh, when we some months ago um, considered the zoning change uh, on Pleasant Street near the um, Elm Street interchange, mm -hmm. um, did we not notify the abutters in that instance, I think, as a courtesy more than a, as a requirement? Uh, I believe the, the council, the CEDC asked the town manager's office to notify them as a courtesy, but it was not part of the initial, or it was not part of the process of rezoning or the initial advertisement or anything like that. But I believe after we had a couple hearings or at least one hearing, the CEDC may have asked the town manager to notify them as a courtesy. If I can. It, so at this point, this is just a hearing for the zoning change, but not for the proposed building. But if it were for the proposed building, then there would be a butter's notices. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. And, and if I may also, so the purple line that goes through, and I don't think Josh ever sent us a packet that had this picture or anything. So this is the first time I'm seeing that. Yeah, we're never. It, so outside of the lot, well, if you can um, so, uh, zoom, yeah, out. zoom out a little bit. So, so the lot to the upper side, which would be to the what western side, mm -hmm. does that mean that that lot is partially on residential? Yes. So they have parking on residential, and the lot beyond that has parking on residential as well. Yes, the pre-existing non-conforming. Well, we don't know that because that's not the scale. They can operate. They can use thirty feet beyond that purple line that's something we have in our zone uh, looks that's I'm, true that is true. part of the picture i'm i'm guessing it's more than 30 feet mr chairman before we proceed can we have uh david gore's letter to the board read into the record please i had a problem printing it off it should be any correspondence should be read it. into the record. I think I may have it. Do I have it? Uh, Jennifer? No. Yes. Uh, if I may, uh, for my own edification at least, um, what about this proposed change does not constitute spot zoning? Because you're not spot zoning, you're not taking a parcel and zoning it a separate. Um, zoning district in the middle of an existing zoning district here. All you're doing is extending a zoning district back. That is not considered spot zoning. Spot that's zoning would be if you had re residential all around it and you took one lot in the middle of all that residential and made that commercial, that would be spot zoning. This, you're just extending an existing zoning district back. That is not spot zoning. Uh, that, I, I don't believe that's the definition of spot zoning. Um, spot zoning is allowed under cer certain circumstances, but that's that's clearly not the definition. Um, if we if we looked at all the lots and made the line move with all the lots on the on the road there, that might make sense because then if we have non-conforming lots, then we kind of force the lot into conformance and that sort of thing. But anyway, you go back to that aerial picture. How about if we move the lot? How about if we move the one thing we could do is move the line 30 feet short of those that pavement next door at the um I think I think that's the last center. I think I think the eastern bank is the last commercial property. 
Is it this one? No, the house next to it is commercial. Right. This. So that's more of a residence, isn't it? No. I, but I don't think it's in the CBD. I don't think that house is in the CBD. Because there's a lot of businesses in that. In the, in the back in the carriage house, there are um, have been businesses. There was a beauty parlor in there. There was a massage parlor. But but typically that, I, th I think, is the, is the line. So I think technically East and Bank is the last piece in the central business district. What if we move the line shorty, sh 30 feet short? So that, that parking lot would now be non-conforming and we could bump them back a little bit. I, I, uh, I have to say, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm not sure I like the way this is going. I, I don't think that we have the responsibility to make this right. We have a proposal before us and we should vote simply on what is before us. And if the proponent's not here to explain what they're doing, and I do agree, Mr. Wood, this is, looks to me like spot zoning. I, I, I have nowhere to go with this. And I, again, I wish I would like to have the correspondence read into the record. David Moore did send in a, a letter that should be read into the record right now. And I do have it up here. Could you read it, please? Um, from David Moore, is it dated today? It came today. To Patrick Driscoll and um, Bridgewater Planning Board regarding Main Street rezoning. Dear sir, I regret that I am unable to attend the meeting on the rezoning of the parcel on Main Street, on Main Street parcel. As a lifelong resident of Bridgewater and retired zoning enforcement agent for the town, I wish to register my opposition to this proposal. Currently, our zoning allows for a 30 foot incursion into the residential zone. Rezoning of this entire parcel for a commercial, it goes over, um, it goes too far over. Would you like me to read it? And commercial will allow. Rezoning for this entire parcel for a commercial will allow for an even further incursion into a residential neighborhood. In my opinion, spot zoning is never a good idea unless it is a last resort. Main Street has historically been a residential area. I feel that this article will erode that residential character. The present owners have allowed the structure to fall into very poor a very poor state, and there is no guarantee that the new developers are not bound to try to preserve the look of the old building. If we have to redevelop the property, the owners will be held, held to the same design issues by site plan approval. It is my opinion that zoning should be kept the same to limit the size of a new structure so close to a residential neighborhood. I also feel that a zoning line that runs parallel to the street is much easier to deal with in zoning enforcement as opposed to zoning lines that follow property lines. Property line can change, but street center lines are much more permanent. If this lot was along Broad Street with many different zones, it might not be so objectionable, but efforts should be made to preserve the residential character as much as possible along Main Street. It is tough enough to find people interested in owning and maintaining one of these other large homes without further decreasing the residential appeal of the neighborhood. Thank you for your consideration of my point of view, David R. Moore. So if, if I may also, there, he doesn't point out in that letter, um, several years ago, the town council put a new ordinance in place for older structures. Um, this building was built in 1891. Mm -hmm. So it probably won't fall within the um, purview of the planning board. Uh, I'm not even sure the council, but there's other steps before 
the uh, business, uh, the, this property owner gets to where he can demolish that building because of its age. Um, it, it probably will have no impact on this. I just want to make everyone aware the building was, is, was built in 1891 and we'll have to go through that additional process. So I don't know how that ties into the timetable of anything that we do tonight or, or in the near future. I think, you know, just looking at the plan, the bottom line is, is if we move the lot line, if we move the zoning line back, it allows for bigger buildings. If we leave it where it is, then they have to build a smaller building. So it's, I think it's, we have to decide whether we want a bigger building. That's di the size of um, the Bridgewater Credit Union, which is diagonally across the street, is, has a 7,800 square foot footprint on an acre and a half, almost an acre and 1.4 acres. It's two stories though. So this would be um, smaller at 5,000 square feet on less than an acre, but could be 15,000 square feet. So it would be a big, big building if we move the line back. If that's what we want. We want to keep the building smaller and you know, keep the line where it is. Well, we move it, uh, we try to come back and figure out a better place to put the line, I guess, right? I mean, I, I'm kind of in agreement with Ray. If there's nobody to argue for it, I don't see it's our responsibility to make it work for them. Um, I also agree with Ms. what Mr. Chase brought up. Uh, I'd be much more comfortable doing courtesy notifications to the abutters as well in this case. It, that's a, it's a significant change. Uh, one that should be done with the, the input of the surrounding neighbors. Uh, a zoning change is often a, a permanent fixture on like a... Uh, I like a, a building going up. Uh, I think I think the zoning change is almost more important than whatever goes there, in the uh, in the end. The other question is they're really just asking to move it so they can put parking there, right? I'm not even talking about the building. That drives everything. So if they have yeah. to put the parking further up, right? And they have to have a smaller building, no less parking. If they have to change the whole area of the building, they have to put parking in the back. So the line's going to drive the mess. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hunt has a question on the chat on Zoom. Thank you. Do I have the floor? Yes. Yes. Uh, just a couple of quick points. Mr. Wood is absolutely correct that that building um, is old and has to go before the historical commission uh, for a demolition permit and they have a certain amount of time to respond. I think it's, I don't quote me, but I think it's up to three months. So that process has to be done. Uh, I also agree that I think, uh, I don't like the zoning change here. Uh, but that building is surrounded by commercial operations. There's a bank down here in the lower right, the dentist office in the lower left, uh, another bank over in the upper part of it and across the street. So there is some consideration that is uh, sort of in a residential area, but I think uh, allowing a smaller building in the front at some point and not changing the zoning right now is probably the right way to go. Thank you. So Dr. Hunt brings up a good point. I, one other thing is I don't think that dentist office is is that in which the commercial zone. And if we're going to change the line, should we try to capture that and so he so they conform? Where's the dentist office? It's right behind. It's on Union. It's the one with the three cars that right, the cars yeah. in the back. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, the bank is on the corner and the dentist office is right there. Where would I look? Because um, I haven't seen the whole chart. So I'm interested in that the the purple line that goes. Is, is that displayed on any of the um, any of the any, not just this this document, but like general charts? Because I'm wondering on, on Main Street, is it jagged or is it kind of straight? Right, that's 200, 200 feet. Yeah. 
is that question directed at me? I, in, in, I don't know. Yeah, if you can answer it, that'd be great. So that would be the zoning line. So you would find that on the zoning map, which is available on the website, or I'm happy to send you a copy tomorrow if you'd like. So that's the line. So that, the that's bank. this that's line here. And then, see, without buildings, so the line you can't goes tell across that, and where there. that line is relative to that. Yeah, right. yeah, because it looks like that line is straight. So yeah. is the parking. If this is this is this is Union Street, right? Yep. And so, I mean, the bank. Right. So you're supposed to be conducting a hearing, not individual conversations. He was just showing me the chart on his laptop. I just just you have to remember, part of the group is hybrid, and they can't see what you yes. guys are doing. Well, it'd be good if we could pop it up on the screen so everybody could see it, I think. What would you like me to pull up? Yeah. Um, I, believe, I believe he's talking about the zoning map. The zoning map? Sure. So do we want to get more information on that? When do we have to respond to the, the council by? Is there a deadline? There is no time frame to respond to the council. <laughs> Do you want a motion or do you want to continue? I mean, speaking? personally, I like keeping the line off the center, the center line. I, I think that it's much easier for zoning enforcement and everything else, like Mr. Moore said. If, if it makes sense to move that line back at some point, maybe we should look at that whole side of the street. I, I, I'll just repeat myself. I think we have a particular proposal before us and we should vote on what is before us and not try to make it work. If we, if this is denied and the council denies it, then let the proponent come back with a different proposal. But right now we have one proposal for us to change the line. And, and I don't disagree with that. I mean, that's the form that we probably have to take, but it's good to have the discussion about how to come up with a good solution that may run down the, you know, a number of different properties to clean up the line in terms of a planning exercise, right? And maybe then we we enlarge this request to something closer to that form. It'd be interesting to see where the line fell on those microphones with that with that third foot. Yeah. What we're looking at is not the scale anyway. I believe we're talking about that line twice. Right. So how do we translate from that map, because there's no buildings on that map, to the purple line that's on the diagram that we saw? Oh, Steve Solari looks like he has his hand up. <laughs> he, he's on mute. He's on mute. On mute. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, zoning lines are taken from the center of the road on either side. All towns, the way they do zoning is they use the center line of the street, and that's what, where they get their, their lineage on either side. They follow the, the road. So you're asking about... Uh, the distance off, you know, where's the distance come from? It comes from the center line out of the road. So I guess because my everybody who knows my father knows he does a lot of um, plot plans and things like that. So my question would be, knowing that 200 feet from the center line or whatnot, um, how do you how do you find that line on these diagrams so that we know precisely where that line's cutting through the parking lots? I think. And Mr. Solari, is it Mr. Silva's office? Uh, it, would, it, would, it would be done by a registered surveyor or engineer. I think Mr. Silva updates uh, maps every so often with that line. Okay. But I, I just think, and you kind of offer your opinion or not, Mr. Solari, but having a, a center line offset for us individual lot lines, is that an easier thing to enforce or not? Um, I just, I'll be honest with you. I've worked for many towns. I've always, every town I've worked for has always had off the center line as the, the, the site, but you had, like you said, non-conforming that are almost spot zoned. That's the only time I've ever really had to deal with any lots that were, you know, in, in an odd shape. I have a question. So 
if like you mentioned, Mr. Wood, um, if this proponent has to go before the historical commission for this house and it's not approved, are we still going to have to consider any changes, any zoning changes, or is it, if it's not approved, are we? I mean, I'll just speak from my opinion, but I think it's a three phase process. Exactly. He's not gonna do a site plan until he knows he's got enough room to build parking for a building that he would like to build. So that, that would come before you. So I think he's looking for the zoning change first. He would do the site plan, bring it back before your group and do that. And then he would ask, because if he gets approval to do that, then he needs to take that approval and go to the historic commission for the, or the demolition permit goes through, I guess, Steve's office. Yeah. And at that point, that's when it gets enforced that the historic commission would look at it. And I don't recall if there's a hearing or there's citizens comments. All I remember in the arguments is it's really just a delay. It, it Effectively, we can't stop a developer from taking down the building, but it brings up a lot of information about the building and maybe changes how they think about it. Thank you. Uh, and I, I like uh, centerline offset just, and I think I argued that on the old Pleasant Street thing we did up by uh, Ron Emmons. I also think that Main Street, like Mr. Moore said, and I, I think the same way about the residential character, that 200 mm -hmm. feet, I think it's is nice because it, control, it helps the planning board to some degree. It's nice for building. And on May, you know, on Broad Street, we've heard a lot of feedback from people, buildings are too big, this and this and that, but at least on Broad Street, you know, that's a major thoroughway. Um, and there's really no single family residential houses around it. On Main Street, you have some single family houses mixed in. You're gonna to try to have a building that blends in with the character of that neighborhood. And 200 feet back, you know, plus the 30 feet should be sufficient to, to, to build a building there. <clears throat> you want a motion? Oh, we have to close our hearing first and get done talking about it. I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. I'll second. Aye. Aye. So that's the planning board public hearing is closed. Yep. Do I hear a motion to close it? So moved. Second. Discussion? All no. in favor? Aye. 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 Seven point seven. Yeah, do we want to discuss it? Pat, you gotta speak into the mic. Do we have a discussion? Does somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion for discussion purposes. I'll make a motion that we not recommend to the council that this zoning change be uh, made. Uh, I'll second that. So our recommendation is just not to not to approve what's before us right now, but Correct. if they want to come back with something else, they Absolutely. can. Absolutely. further discussion? No, because that's what we have to do. We have to either approve or not approve. We don't. I th if, if I may over discussion, I think that if there is an issue over whether this is spot zoning or not, I think that if it does come back before us or the council, that there probably should be a determination made by town council. It seems to me that this is spot zoning without any doubt. But when you, when you take one portion and change it for a purpose of a development, spot zoning. So I, I, and I, I personally, I mean, if this is just a, a discussion, I, knowing that it's historical, um, if it's one of the, that it may be historical, um, that's, that's one of the major points that I like about Bridgewater as soon as I come into the town. I see that there's a difference. I, I like, yeah. I like seeing the the older homes as soon as I, you know, the line starts. Um, and I wouldn't want to take away that character from Bridgewater. It's great that, um, you know, that we're developing um, new buildings and new business, new businesses are coming. In, but I would like to still be able to have a nice balance where we're preserving the history of Bridgewater. 
I think many residents would also feel that way. Um, I like the 200 foot line. If you have to speak into the mic, Pat. I like the 200 foot line. I'm, I'd like to keep it there, but if we want to make a change, I think we should look at that side of the street and decide if we keep it 100 some places, 250 other places, and just fix any issues uh, that exist on either side of it and look at it you know, from a planning perspective instead of you know, for the town instead of just one lot. I mean, to me, it doesn't even seem like there's an existing issue, which is somebody wants to build a larger structure than they would otherwise be able to. Not exactly a zoning issue. Any other discussion? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
because it, it might be substantial. And that's what uh, Attorney Rollins would say. If, it is, if there's a substantial change, the planning board would have to have to see it again. That's correct. Does that sound fair? I would, I would Basically like to take more. no action. Make, make no matter. Well, during the committee report, you can right. report back. Discussion on that motion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and, and just as a note, yeah, it would have been great to hear the proponent, as, as mm -hmm. several have said. Um, I mean, it's clear what they, from the description, what they want to do, but it's hard to ask questions when no one's present. I also think it'd be good to see a map of the adjacent properties and where the pavement ends, where the 230 foot line is now, on all those properties, and how far back we'd have to go to make all this compliant on the side of it. Like the eastern bank and, and the one next to it, I just think that was that would help us, you know, seeing those maps. I know we got some stuff today uh, on this, but there's really not all the detail. That's the buildings on the side. If I may, um, I understand the way council voted. And it does, in a sense, make sense in terms of keeping the project going. But at the same time, I think we should be cognizant of the fact that the developer is not here. And if this did fail, the, the fault falls on him or herself, not, not this board or your board. That when somebody comes to four board, we expect them to be at least there to, to present some sort of argument why something should be changed and we have nobody here saying that so i have no problem with my vote that we deny yeah it is kind of odd that we're playing both sides of the ball exactly, exactly. I, I see no reason to do that to be, to be frank with you no reason whatsoever it, it seems as if we're trying even though i mean it may be with good intentions but we're we're trying to accommodate someone that that's not here and you know, I, I would agree with, with Ray. Whoever's well, speaking needs to speak into the mic. I'm sorry. We're good. I think we, we voted mm -hmm. to take no action. Is there anything else for us? No. I just need to close your close your meeting. I move we uh, adjourn. motion to close the meeting. I second the adjournment. All in favor? Aye. 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 737. Okay. All right. So you guys got business. We'll talk later. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. It's nice seeing you guys. All right. So getting back right. to our regular agenda. Um, next up on the agenda, agenda oh. we have the Trinity Circle Asha Bond release. Mr. Itamiro finished writing a letter today stating that he recommends releasing $36,400 of the bond. That came from Paul LaCosta as well, right? Is Correct. It, did, it come from Dun did Ms. Duntanero send one or just this hey, Mr. Itamiro brought it in, but Paul LaCosta wrote the letter. And it will leave a remaining bond balance of $49,355.75. So the, the developer asked for the entire amount, correct? No, the developer had asked, I believe, initially for the entire amount, and it was agreed upon that it would be a partial bond release at this time. All right, so we have a um, request to release the entire bond for Trinity Circle, but um, the DPW director and Department of Public Roadways Division, uh, Paul DeCosta, is recommending 36400 and that's coming uh, 1500 from the handicap ramps, $13,050 from the trees, 7,150 from the 13 catch basins, 5,100 from the monuments, and $9,600 from 32 lot corners. That adds up to 36,400. Did everybody get this? Do we have a motion to release that? Yeah, I got it. I'll make a motion to release, I believe the 36,400, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So motion by Ray, do we have a second? Second. Second by um, Mr. Keller. 
Do we want to specify that it has to come from the aforementioned sources? Um, no, that's that. not how bonds work. You just release the oh, money. Okay. Gotcha. I, I, well, typically we have a line item that we release the line. So, so we, well, I, it's written down on paper, it's released like this, but when the treasurer released the money, they just release the money. Correct. So oh, okay. I understand. Well, we have a spreadsheet typically. So, um, so do we, we have a motion um, by Mr. Jemmy and second by Mr. Geller. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, next up, we have a um, South Farmer States bond release. We did get an email from Mr. Antonero on that today. I yes. That came in later. I didn't get the chance to print that off. Could you put that up on the screen? It should be up oh, yep, right now. Give me just a moment. Oops. I believe the gist of it is he's not recommending uh, a bond Flash. amount at this point because yeah, this is the oh, ground utility installation uh, no, design. Correct. In order for them to establish the bond reduction for the above subject residential, they need to provide a plan and details for construction of the pr proposed underground utility route. So as you recall, there, it has not been established where the utilities are going in on this site yet. So if the utilities have to go underneath that swale, it would obviously affect the drainage if you're going in on the other side of the site. So until the utilities are designated as Mr. Tenero can't All right, so give we're not an accurate number more, for that bond. We're not releasing any more lots. We're not posting a paper, we're not setting a bond yet, correct? Correct. All right, so we'll just take no action on that at this point because there's nothing to do. There's no but, we, but we will send this information to the developer for him to provide that, what is requested by the DPW director. Right, but I don't think we need a motion on anything. It's just, no, you didn't know. There is no motion. Nothing we can do at this point, right? Correct. Right. Are there any board reports from anybody? They're not. We are meeting August 26th, Jennifer. That's mm -hmm. correct. You have your workshop with Mark Grabowski. With Mr. Grabowski. Next, next Thursday. Thursday. Correct. At 6.30. I believe it's at 6.30, right? And I know yes. I wasn't here for it, but did we get a continuation letter for at least 30 days? For, um, yes, we did. Yes, Rebecca did hand that in. Is that Jasmine, can you stop sharing your screen? Yes. Okay. All right, great. So do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. By Mr. McDonald, do we have a second? Second. By Mr. Garino, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.